how many of you are resolution people? Raise your hand if you're a resolution person. Oh, so none of you, okay. Two of you, okay. Well, Dale preached last week and talked about the fact that 8% of people that do New Year's resolutions make their resolutions. So out of two, that's, that's not good. Um, <laughs> And, and I'm not really a resolution person, um, but, but I have, uh, this year on, on January, for actually on New Year's Eve, I got home um, from hanging out, and I looked in the mirror, and I thought, it's time. <laughs> it's time to do some work. It's time to lose some weight. And some of you are thinking, that's what you said last year, 8%, okay, 8%. I wasn't in the 8% last year, so... So resolutions, we're going to talk more about that in a minute, but first I I want to introduce you to someone um, that's new to our church, Uh, and so Spencer Evelyn Dougherty, are you back there? Come on, stand up, let us see Spencer Evelyn. Can you guys welcome Spencer Evelyn? And and so it's good to be with you this morning, Um, I love being in worship together. I, one of my friends that's a pastor, he posts every week, and, and he says, it's great when the tribe comes together. And, and I, I like that saying, but I just, I love being with you guys. I love coming in um, to the sanctuary and worshiping together. Um, I love seeing you every week, and, and so it's good to be with you. And so, so this year, I don't know if you've made resolutions or not. If not, you know, we need some of you too, so that I will have a chance of being in the 8%. But we are, we're, if you're not a resolution person, that's okay, but, but our church does something every year, and that's that in January, the month of January, is our month that we devote to prayer and fasting. And I love that. I love it, because there is no better way to start our year than to really pray and fast and focus on, on our spiritual life and what God's doing in our life. And so, so I want to ask you to join us for the month of January. And, and, and each year we put together a um, prayer guide. You'll, if you look up here on the altars, you'll see there's some prayer guides around here. And, and so there's, we, we made these. They're devotionals each day for the rest of the month that are written by people in our church and leaders in our church. And then there are prayer prompts. There are different things. And so, so I want to ask you to join us this month and really... Focus in on prayer and fasting. So everyone take out your bulletin real quick if you have a bulletin. If you didn't, I've got some helpers here. If you didn't get a bulletin, raise your hand because everybody needs one today. So go ahead. We've got some helpers that are going to pass out some bulletins. If you've got your bulletin, take, one, take it out and pull out this little white piece of paper, okay? I want to talk about this piece of paper for just a minute. As we're getting these passed out, they've got a lot of work to do around here. We've we got some over here, Jay. And, and so I want you to take this card out. You can listen as they're getting these passed out. But this is a commitment card. And, and we're not going to do anything thing with it right now, but I want to explain it. And then at the end of the service, we're going to respond by using these cards. And so this card has four things on it. It says, I plan to support the ministries of WCN Church during January 2020 by... And there's four things. Number one, praying. Like I said, this guide has prayer prompts for you. Some of you may say, well, I don't know what to pray. We've helped you out. We've tried to make this as easy as possible. There are things in this guide every day that you can focus on in prayer. So praying. Number two is fasting. I told you it's the new year, and I looked in the mirror, and I said, something's got to change. So I actually started a new thing, and it involves fasting. And so it works perfectly with this this January series. Fasting is something, if you've never done it before, fasting is withholding or or not doing something that you usually do to take that time to focus on God and prayer. And so for some people, fasting is meals. Like right now I'm doing a thing where I, I only eat for certain parts of the day and then I skip other parts. And during that time, it should bring my focus to God. So you could fast meals. Maybe it's you're going to fast dinner. Maybe it's you're going to fast a couple times a week or certain days. You can do meals. You can fast. This is something I hear of quite a bit. This probably wouldn't hurt you these days. But fast social media or something in your life that's a hobby that takes up a lot of time and energy that you could take that time and you could focus it better on Christ. So there are all sorts of things. You can fast just about anything, but but, but we want to ask you to pray with us, and we want to ask you to fast with us. 
And then the next thing is there are prayer groups on Sunday evenings at 6 o'clock here at the church in Hawks Hall. We're going to be working through this month of prayer and fasting, and, and there are prayer groups there. And also, if you want to be a part of a group that doesn't meet here, meets different times, or you want to start a group, let us know. We, we want you to be praying together. So this is really cool. Let me tell you how this works. This morning, before I got to church, I had three different texts from three different pastors that said, I just want you to know I'm praying for you today. You know what that makes me want to do? That makes me want to sit down and spend some time in prayer for the people around me. And so joining in a group or finding someone um, in the church or around you, find someone in your life that you could commit to pray together, kind of make a, a pact together that you're going to pray together every day and send each other texts, say, hey, I'm praying for you today. Uh, every week before, um, before service, I spend time and I pray for, for all of the other churches that I can think of, all of the pastors, all my friends, the requests that come to my mind Prayer is something that we typically think is a private thing, and it, it is, but it's also something we do together. And so the third thing on this list is, is accountability in prayer. Find someone, get in a group that will help you focus on prayer this month. And the last thing is this. We're focusing on the Psalms in this series. We're going to be teaching through different Psalms. We're looking at the Psalms. You probably noticed we've had several different Psalms and, and, and verses out of Psalms read this morning. We're going to be focused on that. I want to ask you to read through the Psalms with us. So in this book, there is a, a guide to what you need to read every day to read through the Psalms in the rest of this month. So I want you to take this card. I want, I want you to put it next to you. And at the end, I, I want you to be thinking about what you're willing to do, how you're willing to commit to be a part of this prayer and fasting thing. Because we don't do it just, just for fun. We do it because we believe the best thing that you can do in this new year is to start by focusing on God and giving your time to prayer and fasting. And so put that next to you. We'll come back to that here in a little bit. Um, but, but I want you to know, the number one thing you could do, you, you can make resolutions, you can think about losing weight, you can think about getting smarter, reading books, all of those different things. Nothing is more important in this new year than you growing in your relationship with Christ. You growing closer to Jesus. Nothing is more important. So through this series, we're going to be looking at the book of Psalms. How many of you have read some Psalms before? Maybe not the whole book, but how many of you have read Psalms? Okay, so Psalms is one of the most practical books in Scripture because Psalms is written by people who are going through life, who are going through difficult times and good times and worshipful times, and, and it's written as a book of worship and prayer and instruction for God's people. And so it's one of the great things about Psalms, a lot of people use Psalms in their daily devotional time. Uh, a lot of people use it to guide them as they study and they pray because that's what it's there for. The book of Psalms is written to help God's people be faithful in their relationship with God through prayer and through worship. And so today we're going to look at Psalm chapter 1, the first one. And there is something really important right here, something really important that we have got to catch today. So Psalm chapter 1, let's, let's jump into it. It says this, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so with the wicked. They are like chaff that bl wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. Verse 6, For the Lord watches over the ways of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. 
So what we saw in this Psalm chapter 1, the six verses that make it up, what we see is a, a contrast between two types of people or two decisions that we can make. There is the person, it's a, it starts by saying, blessed, how many of you want to be blessed this year? Okay, it, it, there's a contrast between people that will prosper and people that will face destruction. How many of you want to prosper this year? All right, how many of you want to face destruction? Good answer, guys. You guys are smart. You're already doing well this year. Good job. So, so there's this contrast we see. And the first word is blessed. Now, I want to start by saying I think that we mess up the idea of God's blessing in our life all the time. Because we think anytime something good happens to us, we are blessed by God. But anytime something difficult happens, we're cursed or God's blessing is not with us. We sell way short the blessing of God. In fact, if you watch college football, you'll see a team win, or pro football, you'll see a team win, and they'll bring the microphone, and they'll interview the coach or the player, and sometimes those people will say, most of the time they'll say, we're just blessed, you know, because we won, right? As if the blessing of God is about winning a football game. On the flip side, I'll, I'll leave it with football. I had the opportunity to go to a, a game with my brother several years ago in Detroit. It was the Packers against the Lions. And if you're a football fan, you'll remember this game. We were at the game. It was a good game. At the end of the game, the Lions looked like they had this game locked up. They were up. The Packers had like, I don't remember how many yards, like 60 yards to go. And were down. They needed a touchdown. There, I mean, it, there was no way it was going to happen. And Aaron Rodgers dropped back. And he rolled around a little bit, and he threw this long bomb. Robert and I had gotten up to walk out because we wanted to beat the crowd. So we were at the other end of the stadium, and we're walking around the concourse. And right as this is happening, we're standing about even with the goal line. And we look over, and the tight end from the Packers jumps up and grabs the ball and falls into the end zone. And the Packers win. And the opposite of blessing is what we heard a lot of when we left that stadium, not just, I didn't mean cursing as in bad words, but we did hear a lot of that. But, but literally, people were walking out of that game saying, we're cursed. Why does this always happen to us? Oh, come on. Why do I have to experience this heartbreak over and over again? And, and we tend to view blessing and curse as good things happening or being a Lions fan or bad things happening. And so... There's this contrast, but I think that we're selling God's blessing so short. And we're going to see that in Psalm 1 today. And so, so blessed versus cursed, blessed um, prospering versus facing destruction. We all choose prospering, right? Well, let's look at Psalm chapter 1 that says blessed and then gives us two sides so it starts with the do nots. It says, blessed is, is the one, let me get back to it, blessed is the one who does not, and it gives us three things. So right here, we have this choice. Do we want to prosper or do we want to fail? Do we want to be led to destruction? It said, blessed, prosper, is not the person that does these things. So those three things are this. Who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. Okay, so some people believe that this is a progression. Not everybody, but some people believe that this says walk in the way, and then stand, and then sit. If you think about that, there's this progression from taking steps, to being kind of locked in and standing, to really being locked in and sitting. And so some people believe that this is a progression here in the psalm, that, that you go from one to the other. And, and I told you, I'm, I'm working on my weight, so I thought about this, and this is true in my life in, in several areas, but one way in, in specific. Right now I'm doing this fasting thing, and I'm not supposed to eat after 7 o'clock, but I stay up really late, and so I have to walk into the kitchen several times a night, and I walk in, and every time I look and I see food on the counter, and I think, that looks really good. 
but I've been down this road before because I see a bag of Doritos and I think, I just need, I just need a taste of something because I haven't eaten in a while. And I open that bag and I reach in and I grab a Dorito and I eat it and I start walking away and I think, that was really good. And I walk back and I stand for a second. So I walked up, I grabbed, I walked away, and then I end up standing in front of the Doritos and I start eating a few more. And you know how this ends? I'm sitting in a chair, polishing off half a bag of Doritos. And so it's this idea that that this progression, and and I don't know if that's exactly what it's saying here, but the the point is this. If you want to be blessed, the decisions you make need to lead you toward blessing. If you want to lose weight, don't walk over to the Doritos. If you want to get in shape, don't do the wrong things. And so we see this contrast, the the do nots. If you you fail at this, if you walk in the way of the wicked, if you're spending your time doing things that are wrong, if you're standing in the company of the wicked, if you're sitting with mockers, if, you're, if that's where you're living, then guess what? You're not going to experience the prosperity and the blessing that God has for you. You're going to be led to destruction. So, so let's look at the results of wickedness that we see. Number one, the result is this. It says it's weak and unsustainable faith. It says people that walk in the way of the wicked, people that stand and people that sit in the way of the wicked will be like chaff that's blown away. I see this all the time. I see this all the time. People say, I want to I wanna have a relationship with God. I want to be in the right place. I, I want to grow in my relationship. But then they take steps in the other direction. And their faith is just like something that's blowing away in the wind. It's here one moment, and then the wind comes and they're gone. And then maybe the next year, they come in, I want to be strong in my faith. But they take steps toward the wicked. And all of a sudden, like something blowing in the wind, it's gone. Weak and unsustainable faith. This is true in every walk of life. If you focus on your relationship with God, if you focus on your character, then guess what? When the winds and the the changes happen in your life, you'll have a foundation that will keep you from moving. But if you don't have a foundation, you're in big trouble. This is all through Scripture. This is all over the place. If you want... To be blessed, you have to take steps toward blessing, not towards destruction. So the first thing, if you're hanging out with the wicked, if you're standing in wickedness, if, you're, if that's the choices you're making, you're going to have a weak and an unsustainable faith. The second thing, you will be unworthy of God's calling and God's blessing on your life. It says here in the scripture, therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. In other words, when it all comes down to it and it will come down to it and God is judging, if you choose wickedness over righteousness, you won't be able to stand. You won't be worthy of that moment. You cannot choose wickedness and not end up in destruction. Which leads us to the third thing, and that's that you're headed for destruction. See, I think sometimes we make a bad choice, we eat some Doritos, and we think, that was good. I feel all right. I'm still walking around. I'm all good. And we think, it's okay. And then we take another step in that direction. And sometimes it's easy to get convinced that the the bad choices we're making or the walking in the way of the wicked or standing with the wicked, this happens all the time where people don't even realize how messed up their life is getting and it ends up in destruction. Think about Think about pastors, politicians, leaders all over the place, friends in your life that have have chosen the way of the wicked, whether they meant to or not, and they went down a road and they thought they were okay, but eventually it all catches up with you. And what this scripture says is whether it does here or not, there's a judgment coming and it will catch up with you. You can't choose wickedness 
and end up with God's blessing and end up with your inheritance from Christ. You have to choose righteousness. So we have the, the do nots. Do not walk with the way, in the way of the wicked. Do not stand. Um, do not sit in the company of, of mockers. Don't stand in, with the sinners. Don't choose that path or it's destruction. But the good news is this scripture gives us the other side too. So today we talked about prosperity, blessing versus destruction and failure. And we all want blessing from God, right? So let's look at what that looks like. Let's look at that. See, see the, the do, the does, the do's, the does, I, I don't know what that sounds like, in this scripture are very simple. It says this, but those who delight, whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Blessed is the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. So the do nots is don't walk in the way of the wicked, don't, don't stand with sinners, don't sit in the company of mockers. The, the do is, is delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on it day and night. That's pretty simple, right? What is this telling us? Because this is the most important thing right here. This, this is it. This is the whole thing. It's not saying find the right church that has the perfect combination of everything you want and then you'll be blessed by God. It's not saying do some magic formula. It's not saying if you can just be a little bit better than everyone else, then you'll be blessed by God. It's not saying any of those things. It's not saying throw a good bumper sticker on the back of your car, wear a cross around your neck, and you'll be blessed by God. What does it say? It says delight in the law of God and meditate on it day and night. So this is the big thing. See, this book, this, this book of Psalms is all about us walking faithfully with God, us experiencing the blessings of God, and it starts in chapter 1 with a call to this. The, the, the first psalm in the book meant to inform prayer, worship, and faithfulness to God points to one thing is the foundation for all of it, God's Word. The one foundation for your life being faithful to God is knowing and living and meditating on God's word. It's not about being in the right church. It's not about being a Boy Scout in church terms. It's not about bumper stickers. It's not about catchphrases. It's about knowing God's word. So if we have this choice today between prospering and destruction, the difference between the two for you will be God's word. It says, he who delights in the law of the world, uh, the Lord, who meditates on it day and night. The law of the Lord is, in other words, it's not just talking about the rules, it's talking about God's word. This is used throughout scripture, to, and it's understood that it means God's word, what God says, who God is. So delight in it. Now, the word delight is important here because I think some of us have a feeling that, hey, I'm following God, but I'm doing it because I have to. And if I don't follow God, then I'll be in big trouble. This says that you should delight in the law of the Lord. This says you should delight in God's word. You should understand that this is good. This is what's right for you. I'm going to be honest with you. When I was younger, there were times that I thought God's law and God's word were restricting me from being what I could be. But now I understand as I've grown... That God's word helps me become who I was created to be. And so we can delight in God's word because it's good and it's right and it's what we were created for. So delight in the law of the Lord. And number two, meditate. This word meditate is more than just sitting silently. It means to think, to ponder, to know, to speak to utter, to groan. This word literally means that, that everything, we, that this law of the Lord, that we're so delighted in it that we spend time with it and we know it and we think about it and we study it and we pray it and we speak it and it becomes 
us, our lives. And so the key to your faithfulness to God and blessing from God lies in your knowing and valuing God's word. There are far too many people, far too many churches that have devalued the word of God. Far too many people have said, you know what, don't worry about that whole thing, just do this. In fact, there, there, there are some heresies, I believe, in the church that are alive and well. One of those is, it's only about what Jesus says. Forget everything else, just focus on Jesus. Now listen, Jesus is great. I don't disagree that you should focus on Jesus, but you can't throw out the rest of Scripture if you're focusing on Jesus. Because guess what? Jesus came to fulfill the Scripture. And so, that's a, that's a fallacy. We are called to know God's Word. The Old Testament, the New Testament, the Gospels, all of it. Know it and live it. There are several others. One of those is just cherry picking. We talk a lot about the prosperity gospel. That's where you just pick a, a text and say, hey, it says I'm going to get rich. So I'm going to get rich if I do the right things. That's a fallacy. You've got to know God's word. And so the key to your faithfulness to God and the blessing from God lies in knowing and valuing God's word. Why is this? It's because God's word is our primary way to know who God is and what God is all about. God's word is revelation from God of who God is. So how can we follow God if we don't know who God is? What happens when you devalue the word, what happens when you don't know God's word is you start to make God into what you want God to be. You start to make God into to your little God that fits your needs and your desires instead of the one true God that has revealed himself through Scripture. And so knowing God's word is the key to you experience, experiencing the blessing. So let's look real quick at the results of righteousness. So we looked at the results of evil. It's, it's bad. It's destruction. It's, it's unfaithfulness. It's wavering in the wind. The results of right, righteousness are three things. Number one, you'll be fruitful. Number two, you'll be durable. Number three, you'll be prosperous. Listen, 2020, if you've got some resolutions, if, if you want to be a better you, these are pretty good goals. To be fruitful, to be who God created you to be and to produce fruit in your life, to be a person that when other people are around you, they experience God's goodness and God's grace and that you become a conduit of God's working in the world and you become fruitful, to be durable. I don't know about you, I don't know about you but... I know that I'm in for some rough days in 2020. I don't have anything specifically in mind. I got bad news, all of us are gonna have some rough days. You're gonna have some days where you wanna crawl under a rock. If you know God's word, your faith will be durable. You can stand up against the difficulties. And number three, you'll be prosperous. That doesn't mean I'm not telling you you're gonna get rich. It doesn't mean that everything's gonna work out exactly how you want it. It means this. No matter what happens to you, you have a God that loves you, is with you, and in the end is going to bless you in ways that you could never imagine. Even in difficult times, you can receive blessing from God. And so as we, as we come into 2020, I want us to understand something. Every day, every day, we make important choices. You know this. Every day. We make important choices. That could be what we're going to consume, and I'm not talking about Doritos. I'm talking about the things that we consume, not just the food, that's part of it, but the media, the things we listen to, the people we listen to, the people we surround ourselves with. We have decisions as to what we're going to consume, how you're going to spend your time. This is a huge one, how you're going to spend your time. What are you going to do with your time? Number three, what your attitude will be. This is so important because you can come to church and be in the worst attitude in the world and guess what? You're probably going to miss what God has for you. But if you come in the right place, you're going to experience God in such a good way because God is with you and God wants to work. So what your attitude will be, how you will treat others and who you're going to surround yourself with. But the most important choice you're going to make is every day 
We have to choose to follow Christ or to follow something else. Every day we have that choice. Psalm 1 lays out this choice. You can be someone who chooses righteousness and chooses God's word, or you can be someone who chooses wickedness and is led to destruction. And the key to all that is knowing God through knowing God's word. So as we start this series, the band's going to come up, and I want to call your attention back to this card. i got to find it. I want to call your attention back to this card. I want you to take a pen from the chair in front of you, and I want you to pull out this card. And I want you to understand that if you want to grow and you want to experience blessing in 2020, the best way you can do that is through committing to know God's word and to know God more. So I want you to fill out what are you willing to do. There's four boxes there. You can check them all. You can check one. You can check two. But I want you to commit yourself this morning to choosing God today, tomorrow, and every day. And the truth is, knowing God's word unlocks the answers to all of these other decisions we have to make. What we're going to consume, who we're going to surround ourselves with, how we're going to treat others. If we know God's word, we, we know what to do in those circumstances. So I want you to take this card. I want you to fill it out. And as we play this song... I want you as an act of commitment to walk up to an altar or give it to somebody else who can walk to an altar and lay it on the altar. And I want you to commit, to grow, to become more like Jesus this year. Father, I love you and I thank you that you put up with with the times that I've messed up. I thank you that I have the opportunity today to make a choice for you and every day to make a choice for you. And I pray for each person that's here this morning that we would choose you, that we would know your word, that we would know you, and that we would choose righteousness in everything that we do. So, Father, take our commitments, take our lives, and take our hearts now. In Jesus' name.